Welcome to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. This is the global edition of Guitar Search Saturday for season two. To take things up a notch this season, I thought I'd take the show globally. The great thing about the In The Blues community is how many great people there are on board, how many other YouTubers I connect with, and other people that I can collaborate with to bring you great videos like this. Today's episode was shot by my good friend Landon from Lando27 Music, so definitely head over to his channel and click subscribe. All the links will be in the description below. I thought this would be a really great opportunity to take the show worldwide, even virtually. We may end up somewhere that you know, we may end up in one of your local shops, or even a store that you really want to visit but you haven't been able to. This episode takes place at Spaceman Music in Ottawa, Canada. This is a really great shop, I hope you like it. Let's go in and take a look. Mega, 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 mega amp. amp. Oh man, I can't escape the mega amps. Thankfully though, this shop has lots of great stuff. Let's continue. That's one poster I'd never expect to find in a guitar shop. Evil Knievel, cool. Staring us right in the face is a Nevada NG-10. <laughs> the NG stands for not good. Actually, I don't know. I'm only making an assumption there. Behind it, we have a Yorkville Trainor. These are actually made in Canada, and it's great to see them in their local stores. I've owned a couple of Trainor amps, and they're kind of comparable to a Hot Rod Deluxe or something similar, at least with the ones that I had. My guess, based on the size and the look, this particular Trainor would be a 15 to 20 watt transistor practice amp. Custom amps have to be the most underrated practice amps of all time, or very, very close to. For their size, they actually sound a whole lot better than you would expect. I actually had a custom practice amp for many years, and it was one of the best sounding practice amps I ever owned. It was also one of the first amps I remember seeing digital reverb in, and it actually sounded fantastic. PV. I think Landon has led us to the promised land. Staring back at us right there from the background is a PV Stereo Chorus amp. These amps are extremely loud. The first time I ever heard the term, it will peel the paint off the walls was in reference to one of these amps. <laughs> They're not only loaded with two 12 inch Scorpion speakers, which are some of PV's best speakers, it's also rated at 150 watts RMS. Now the Bandit is rated at 80 watts. So that should give you some indication of what you can expect volume-wise from one of these. I like when stores carry a good selection of effects pedals from less expensive stuff all the way through to more boutique gear. What I really love about seeing cabinets like this, there's always something that you don't expect to see and there's always something that will appeal to different people. There's a really great and unique assortment of wire pedals at the bottom, which I didn't expect to see. Now that massive looking one is actually called the Ibanez Tone Lock WD7 Weeping Demon Wire Pedal. With a name like the Weeping Demon, you'd probably suspect this pedal to do something crazy, much like the Red Witch Fuzz Pedal. <laughs> to my surprise, it actually sounds extremely musical and pretty sweet. Check them out on YouTube. And one of the features of the Tone Lock series stuff is you could actually set up the pots on the pedal and then push them down to lock them so they don't get moved. Awesome idea. I've actually had two of the Ibanez Tube Screamer Tone Lock series pedals over the years and they're always great. If you're looking for a really great flanger that doesn't break the bank, check out the classic flanger from Joyo. It's one of my personal favorites. Are you looking for a pedal that will set you apart from, well, music in general? Check out the Digitech Whammy pedal. I have no idea why these things are so popular. I remember seeing Gear Man Dude's video on this many, many years ago, and it had me in tears. It was an absolute crack up. I'll put it up in the cards. Let's go check out the amps and guitars.
Bugera makes some extremely versatile and pretty unique stuff at a great price. I actually have one of their practice amps. This is the Bugera 1990 Infinium head. This is actually a tube head. Not only does this amp have a vintage EQ section, it also allows you to swap from pento to triode mode as well. One of the good things about Bugera is they're quite affordable and they're really quite versatile for what you pay. Hey cool, here's something you don't see every day. This blue guitar is an Airline Jetson Junior Spooky Rubin guitar from Eastwood Guitars. What's cool about this, it's loaded with a single humbucker, so if you dig your bridge pickup tones, you're gonna love this beast. Also, if you have any idea what this glitter guitar is, please let me know in the comments. Cheers. They say a picture tells a thousand words. <laughs> Check out this guitar by Blount. I've never seen anything quite like it. This Blown guitar is loaded with two EMG humbuckers for those who like to rock. This particular rig is a Yorkville Trainor Bass Master head. It's actually a bass guitar head. At first glance, I actually thought it was a guitar head just based on its size. From what I understand, I think these max out at around 150 watts. It's hard to find accurate information on these online. Oh yeah, the Fender Vibro King. Not only is this one of the heaviest amps of all time, it's also one of the best sounding Fender amps I've had a chance to use over the years. I've never owned one of these, but I actually had a chance to crank one up in a shop one time, and I was totally blown away by the tone. Just don't go try lifting them. <laughs> This is one of the Solid State series of the Epiphone amplifiers that came out probably about 10 years ago now. I've actually had a chance to play these also and I wasn't anywhere near as blown away by these as their valve or tube counterparts. That said, this would actually be a really great first amp for someone who's learning how to play. This amplifier is the Crate V33. It's loaded with two 12-inch speakers, and it also features four EL84 output tubes, and it's cathode-biased. I actually owned a USA-made Crate V30 many, many years ago. There's a demo still on YouTube, and it was just riddled with issues. Eventually, though, I did have it fixed with one tech, and it sounded absolutely spectacular. Tone-wise, they're a very unique-sounding amp. Check them out if you're looking for something a little bit different. And for 269 bucks, you can't go too far wrong with that price. Unless you're big into the boutique scene, a lot of guitar players won't actually know much about Matt Amp. Matt Amp makes some amazing tube heads and they're very, very small, both in terms of physical size and also in terms of wattage. I used one of their five watt tube heads one time through a 12 inch speaker at a gig and it was plenty loud. The Matt Amplifiers are definitely not the cheapest option out there for a small low watt head, but you get what you pay for. These are hand wired in England and they're built extremely well. PV. Ha ha, I knew it. This is a PV Express 112 and it's powered by Intel, as you can see from the stickers on the left. I think we've all wondered what exactly TransTube is and how it works, and now we know. Thanks, Intel. <laughs> Hey, cool dog. I know so many musicians here where I live who swear by the Fender Bandmaster amp heads. Not only are they light, they're quite loud, rated at 40 watts, loaded with a set of 6L6 power tubes for that big fat Fender sound. If you're a huge fan of the 65 Blackface sound and you're into high headroom amps, definitely give this one a look.
please remain calm. We have our first official lefty sighting. Firstly, I hope you liked the new lefty alarm. I thought that one was just too hilarious to pass up. Not only do we have a classic American standard Stratocaster on the right, but we also have a three quarter size electric guitar on the left of that. I don't think I've ever seen a small electric guitar like this in a lefty before. Awesome. When I first saw that hanging on the wall, I thought to myself, it must be a perspective thing making it look so small, or maybe just the guitar on the left of it is so much bigger. But no, it actually is a three quarter Strat style electric guitar. While Spaceman Music sells predominantly second hand gear, it also stocks a range of brand new electric guitars from Epiphone. The one on the far left is an Epiphone Junior. It's loaded with one pickup towards the bridge, which is really cool. And for 169 bucks, it looks like a bit of a deal. I'm a huge fan of the Epiphone casinos, and if I ever see a lefty one of these anywhere, I'm gonna pick one up. They're absolute blues machines. While I've never owned a PV Classic 30, I get so many messages about them, and I actually recently saw one for exactly the same price as this, $3.99 locally here in Australia as well. As I called the shop to see if they still had it, it just sold. That's always my luck. The strength of the PV Classic range is they sound great on the clean channel, so they work well with pedals, but they also have a really usable drive channel. There's no doubt about it, if you don't have pedals, you can get some great tones out of this amp. Hey, hey, another version 2 Mustang 3. Sweet. $2.99? That's actually not a bad secondhand price. Still stand by my word saying the older Mustangs sound a whole lot better than the GT range. Holy crap, this is actually a bass amp. It's called the Custom Charger. Less than 500 of these were made back in 1971, and back then they cost nearly 500 bucks. If you take into account inflation, it works out to about three grand in today's money. Crazy stuff. Banjos, the tennis rackets of guitars. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I've never seen a 212 rig set up like this. It's kind of odd to see two 12 inch speakers stacked vertically rather than either horizontally or slightly staggered, much like a Hot Rod DeVille 212, for example. Cool stuff. This vintage B&H speaker box or amplifier looks pretty wild. I was unable to find anything online relating to this thing. If you know anything about it, please post in the comments. Hey, cool, a shag covered M80 amplifier from Fender. I actually did some gigs with these in San Francisco back in around 2010. While the drive channel's nothing to write home about, the clean channel is usable, and if you have a pedal in front of it, it can actually sound okay. Spaceman Music absolutely rocks. Not only do they have a great selection of guitar and amplifiers, they also have some speakers on the wall. I'm a huge speaker nerd and I've been able to actually test most of these on what you see so far. The Cannabis Rex on the left is a great upgrade for something like a Supersonic or Blues Junior amplifier. And same goes for the Texas Heat speaker. That's actually one of my favorite speakers ever and I actually have one of them in my PV Bandit right now. I also used to use it in the Fender Mustang 3 version 2 amp and it made a huge difference to the sound. It's one of the most efficient speakers from Eminence, so if you want a bit of a volume kick, they're a great option. If my memory serves me correctly, that speaker on the top right, which is a 15 inch speaker, came straight out of a Fender Excelsior. I actually had one of those amps for a while as well. Spaceman Music has a great selection of Fender amps. That red knob twin is only $549. In Australia, that would be about a thousand bucks easily second hand.
While it doesn't look like there was that many acoustics or electrics in this place, it's actually crammed full of great guitars. I'll shut up for a minute and let you take a look around. Oh, I love it. I love that lefty alarm. That wraps up the first episode of Season 2 for Guitar Search Saturdays. A huge thanks again goes out to Landon from Lando27 Music on YouTube. I really appreciate him taking the time to go and film this episode for everybody. So take a moment and click subscribe to his channel. I'll post links up in the cards as well as in the description. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it around with your friends. And if you're local to this shop, also let me know your thoughts of it in the comments below. It looks like a fantastic store. A huge thanks to all of my Patreon subscribers. I absolutely appreciate your support. It keeps original content coming. Colin, thank you so much. You're the first of the Patreon subscribers to have your name in the credits. Depending on my workload, these videos will be up either every Saturday or every second Saturday. Just keep an eye on my channel. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell for notifications for future episodes. Thanks again for watching. Another huge thanks to Landon for all his help filming. Don't forget to check out his channel. Thanks again. Catch you soon.